Rev up your engines. Good day from Australia, Scotty. Would you recommend the Toyota 86 as the first manual car? Also in Australia, there are restrictions on first cars. What other North American standard cars would you recommend? Okay, interesting. Restrictions on first cars. I guess they don't want you to have too much horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> they know you Aussies are all crazy, huh? Yeah, the Toyota 86, you know, it's it's a Subaru. It's got the boxer Subaru engine. Toyota, for some weird reason, they make great cars, but they've always messed with sports cars with other people's engines. The first real Toyota sports car that they made was made in the 60s, and they only had a few thousand of them. Uh, it had a uh, Yamaha engine in it. Then the Celicas, for a while, had a Yamaha motorcycle, basically, designed engine, and now they're going with Subaru. And uh, Subarus can have problems here and there, but if you get a standard transmission in one, that's their weak points, the automatics. They're, they're fun to drive. I got a customer that bought one, but, and I do have to say, I'm relatively disappointed. They did buy an automatic transmission, and to me, it was a very slow car. I and mean, I thought it was kind of a slow car, but if you get a standard transmission, it'd be a lot quicker. It'd be fun to drive, and I'm sure it'll last. Stephen Rankin said, Scotty, I got an 03 Nissan Frontier. I'd never change the automatic transmission fluid. Should I do it now? Thanks. Well, if it's working perfectly fine, no. And here's why. When fluid is working the automatic transmission, it uses fluid dynamics to drive your car. It's actually the fluid and the friction inside that's inside the torque converter that's making your car go. And it has to be that way because in an automatic transmission, you step on the brake and come to a stop, the engine is still spinning. If it was a standard transmission and you had it in gear, the car would stall. The reason automatics don't stall is because they have the torque converter and that has some slippage and when you just stopped, it slips and it doesn't stall the engine. Well, when you get an old vehicle and the fluid gets dirty, dirty fluid has more friction in it. And if you change it now and put real clean fluid in, it's more slippery and I've seen people do that and then the transmission slips and it didn't before they changed the fluid. That old, I'd leave it alone. If you buy it brand new and change it every 40, 50, 60,000 miles, you keep doing it. If you don't and you got a lot of mileage, don't change it now. It could destroy things. Why gamble? That thing's got a certain lifespan anyway. It's a Nissan automatic transmission. It's going to wear out anyway. I wouldn't push my luck on that. Bolando says, Scotty, I got an 07 Toyota Tundra that needs air pumps. They say for smog. Can I just unplug them since they cost over $2,000 to replace? Here's the thing. That was a design flaw on that V8 engine. It was a very poor design. And if it runs okay otherwise, all it is is an anti-pollution device. If you live in an area where they don't do anti-pollution inspection on your cars and you unplug it, no one's going to know and no one's going to care. But if you live in an area where you get your car inspected, it's never going to pass the inspection legally. So that's more or less your choice. I know I got people calling me from North Dakota and said, Scotty, you don't inspect anything here. We take everything off, catalytic converters, smog pumps. And if uh, nobody cares, you know, you realize you're going to be polluting the air a little bit more. But, uh, but if you live in an area where they do inspections, you'll never get it legally inspected. All that stuff, some Sometimes on the Toyotas, if it does break and if it sucks too much air, it'll make it run way too lean and it'll actually run poorly and then you'd have to fix the stupid thing. But I've seen a bunch of them here where they run okay, but they just trip the code for that smog pump because they basically built them wrong and take it off and it runs better. Like I say, it's not going to hurt anything other than you can't get it legally inspected if you live in an area where they legally inspect it. Modern day hustler. We recently bought an 05 Crown Victoria for the first time driver. What do you think? We paid two grand out of 96,000 miles. Is that a good deal? Hey, if it runs good and worth good? Yeah, that's a good deal. Everybody knows those are called grandpa cars and grandma cars, but they can last a long time. 96,000 miles is nothing. One of those has probably got that V8 and those engines can run forever. And since it's a newer 105 on the highway, I've got customers that get 20 something miles a gallon driving them around on the highway. It can be a very good car. And of course it's very safe. So it's so big. So it's a first time driver. They're going to feel a lot safer inside of one of those than you are in a little bitty Honda Civic or a smart car or something, because it is a big car car and it has airbags. Daniel Gerardo says, Scotty, I have a manual car and it still has a cable. Makes a strange noise when I push the clutch after I push it a whole bunch of times though. The sound goes up here. What could it be? Okay, well it's a cable. So the first thing you want to do is get yourself a flashlight. You know, one of those little bitty ones like I have that are super bright. And look at both ends of the cable under the dash and then at the other end where it goes into the transmission. And make sure the cables aren't fraying. If those cables are fraying, there are a bunch of strands together and if some of them are frayed, get Get another cable assembly right away. If they aren't frayed, get some good lubrication oil. I'm a motorcycle guy, so you can go to any motorcycle shop or go to Amazon or eBay and buy a can of motorcycle cable spray lube. It's a special lube just for cables. And lubricate the thing, and then it's a good idea to lubricate cables anyways. They never tell you to because they want them to wear out, but if you do, they last a lot longer. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.